Interstate 680 southbound HOV lane completion and expressway conversion project. I'm happy to see that there's a number of potential bidders in the room, so thank you. For those of you that are online, there's an audience in front of me. You can't see them. There are some things. My name is Randy Iwasaki, and I'm the executive director of the Contra Costa Transportation Authority. It's a pleasure to be here today. There's a couple of points that I wanted to cover. First, welcome, and thank you for expressing interest in bidding this very important project for Contra Costa County. Our top priority at the authority is safety. And so what I want to stress is that as the, as the contractors or the, the, the construction management firm or, or our employees, when you're out in the field, make sure you're safe. If the conditions are not safe, you, you have the authority to shut that job down. We do not want to have any incidents out in the construction zone. It just, it affects everybody. And so I want to make sure that, that I relay that information to you that safety is our top priority. It's, we're going to work together and make sure that happens. But if you see that something is unsafe on the job site, you have authority to shut that job down. And number two is we're, we're a partnering agency. And so we, we stress partnering. Our, our CM firm, this is our second, at least in the eight years that I've been at the authority, this is the second time we've hired WSP. And a great firm. This is a highly traveled road, high volume, high speed. And so it's, it's, um, it's a great opportunity for you, but we're a partnering agency. We have taken the arbitration spec out of the contract. We have a dispute resolution ladder that we adhere to and the law has changed. And so if we end up getting to my level and, and the owner's level at the contractor's level, uh, and we're going to end up going to arbitration, but we don't want to go that far, and I, I think our history of the projects that we have advertised, awarded, and administered have kind of resulted in, in great results, but we've never had any disputes go to any higher than Ivan Ramirez's level, so I'm really proud of that. We pay within five days, so once, the, once your, your, your invoices are approved, we'll pay you in five days. And we've had situations where contractors have called us during the holidays normally and they say, hey, can you get the check out earlier? And so as long as that invoice has been approved, we will cut you a check in five days or less. The goal there is that the subcontractors also get a check, hopefully within a very short period of time, because we want to make sure everybody's paid as quickly as possible. And we'll do everything we can to accelerate decision making. A lot of times the owner will wait a long time in order to get a decision made, let's say on a, a value analysis and by the time the decision is made the opportunity is gone and so what we do is we'll say within five days we'll make that decision if we make the decision in three days we'll get a little hopefully get two days on the plus side if we say we're going to do it in five days and we do it in seven days then you're going to take back a couple of days on at least on the decision making process and we've never had that situation we always try to make sure that the decision are made properly and quickly we have partnering uh, meetings. I, I do try to attend as many, and Ben caught me the other day. I didn't attend one, but I do try to attend every partnering meeting. It's, it's important to me. On the work zone areas, this is a highly traveled interstate. It's uh, a commute route for the Silicon Valley and, and the folks in Contra Costa County. We want to make sure that it's operating properly. Take a look at your signing within that work zone. Dust and graffiti, that's a big issue. Keep those work zones as clean as possible. And every now and then drive the jobs as we get into the various interchange modifications. If there's drastic changes, make sure that we, you drive the job to make sure that you understand the signs as well. So that we try to make sure that the, the customer is afforded the best opportunity to make sure that they, he or she gets to the points that they want to go to. And last thing I would say is that we're, we're changing the way we approach how we manage construction projects. We've gone electronic. We're trying to go paperless. And so we're do, we do the bidding online. Since we've gone to the online bidding process, we haven't had a, a dispute. And so that really has saved us a lot of money because every time there's a dispute, we have to engage our attorneys. And then electronic document control, I think that's helping us get better decision making faster because everybody has access to the documents and they can all see the same documents. So those are some, and we're going to um, electronic inspection as well. And then we're going to start using drones on, on the 680 project to do some potential sweet pea analysis, looking at uh, cut and fill and those kinds of things. So we're trying to get into the, 
next generation of technology in our industry. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Abigail Brown. She's going to talk a little bit about a DBE uh, utilization goal that we have on this project. I think it's 16%. And so she'll talk to you a little bit about the efforts that she has in order to make sure we make our great goal. Thank you. Great. Abigail. Thanks, Randy. Um, my name is Abigail Brown, and we are a resource, my company, CPM Logistics, that CCT, CCTA provides to all of their bidders. Um, we work with them on their participation goals for any DBE participation that they include in their bid packages. Um, as Randy mentioned, this bid package has a 16% goal, which is a little bit over $11 million. Um, CCTA is also a partnering agency, and so how we approach helping you is through par a little bit more partnering with the DBEs and actually targeting scope that is relevant to what you're looking for. Um, we will help you connect with that relevant scope and th the correct DBEs that um, can actually, that have a the capacity to be able to work with you. And so, for any of you that will be bidding on this project, um, Melissa Chaparro is back there at that table. Um, talk to her before you leave. Um, we're very good at getting you the right people that you want to work with. Um, I know with CCTA on some of the projects in the past that we've helped with, um, they are, are very, they strongly encourage you to meet this goal. It will make a difference. And we think that because they are providing us as a resource to you that you should be able to meet the goal. So feel free to contact us with you know whatever approach you want to take to do this. You may already have your DBs. You may not need our help with that. But um, we're happy to connect you with any of them that we know in the industry as well. So if you have any questions when this is over, um, connect with Melissa and she can get your contact information and we can move forward with um, working with you on this and being a resource to you. Thanks. Good morning. My name is Eric Lilly. I'm a WSP and I'll be the resident engineer on the project. Uh, before we get started, I just want to go over some of the key staff um, with the authority, uh, WSP and the designer, HDR. So you guys already met Randy Iwasaki. He's the executive director. Uh, Tim Hale is back there. He's the deputy executive director. Ivan Ramirez was just in here, but he snuck out. He's the construction manager. Uh, Mike Ostrom is also a sub to CCTA. He's going to be the project manager. Um, I'm the resident engineer. And then Mark Shippen is with HDR. He's filling in as the design lead right now while Sheena Patel is on maternity leave. So just a couple things before we get started. Uh, just want to note if there's any discrepancies between what's stated in this pre-bid meeting and the contract documents, that the contract documents will prevail. Um, the authority is the contracting agency for this project. Caltrans is the facility owner. BAFA will operate the express lanes and WSP has been hired by CCTA to administer the construction contract. Um, just to make sure uh, there is a couple sign-in sheets in the back. Please make sure you sign in. A copy of these meeting minutes and the sign-in sheet will be distributed through the first addendum, which we're looking at roughly end of next week. Uh, moving on to the project description and location, uh, we have about 17 miles on southbound 680 from the Benicia Martinez Bridge down to El Cerro Boulevard in down to El Cerro Boulevard. Um, so what the project will do is convert the existing southbound I-680 HOV lane from Marina Vista to Treat into an express lane and from Treat to Red Gear Road through a combination of widening and restriping. The project includes a total of seven retaining walls, one bridge widening, and 21 overhead sign structures. More specific work elements include uh, to construct grading, aggregate base, HMA paving, drainage, concrete barriers, Midwest guardrail system, terminal systems, crash cushions, bridge widening. Uh, there's a couple of MSE walls on the project, uh, soldier pile retaining wall, uh, soil nail retaining wall, sign structures, signing, striping, and electrical work. And throughout that whole alignment, there's also some new PG&E electrical services scattered throughout there too. Um, the project is divided into five stages of construction. 
As the, you finish the various stages of construction, the toll system integrator for BAFA will come in behind you um, to install their equipment on the facilities that you've constructed for them. So some of the things that require special attention to that are the project milestones in Section 8105 of the special provisions. We've set milestones, and those milestones are intact so that we give the toll system integrator time to come in behind us and open the project um, when essentially when they complete their work we can complete our work as well some other things requiring a special attention as Randy mentioned would be the e-construction and the uh, authorities project website basically we don't want anything in paper we won't give you paper we don't want it back if there's a specific submittal that needs to go to Caltrans we'll request a paper submittal but unless we request paper everything should be electronic on the project um, also related to safety, as Randy discussed earlier, is the job site appearance requirements in Section 5131 of the Special Provisions. Um, one of the things that we've noticed is that a clean job site also is um, correlated with a safe job site. So we've gone through and put in some additional requirements of what the authority is looking for for maintaining your project site appearance. And another important key thing is the existing utilities verification per section 8115 of the special provisions. The engineer's cost of us estimate on the project is approximately $70 million, and the completion time is 700 working days. Um, notice the proceed requirements. The authority is very eager to get started on this project, so um, just make sure you pay special attention and put the highest priorities in what's shown in section 8104, the start of job site activities of what needs to be completed. Uh, coming up in the first addendum, what we've identified is that you need to start work 21 days after the notice to proceed, where right now the documents show 11. So that'll be coming through shortly. And right now the first anticipated working day on the project is gonna be September 18th, 2018. Uh, some of the encroachment permits that are gonna be required on the project, um, not necessarily limited to, but they include Caltrans, Contra Costa County, cities of Walnut Creek, Concord, Pleasant Hill, Danville and Martinez. Uh, the project is a risk level two, so you need to make sure that we have the sweep approved before beginning any work. There are a couple of environmentally sensitive areas on the project, primarily on the southern end of the project. Um, so before we start any job site activities, we need to make sure all the temporary high visibility fence has been installed. Um, also, we need to make sure that the biological survey and monitoring has taken place. So you need to notify the engineer seven business days before getting on site so that we can go ahead and get the area surveyed, get the area cleared so you guys can come in and put your um, temporary fence up and any other access to the ESA is prohibited. Uh, bid opening. Bids will be open electronically in this room on Wednesday, June 6th at 11 a.m. Um, the bid opening as this pre-bid meeting will be broadcast live on YouTube. Uh, this link will be provided in the minutes. Uh, bids received after this time will not be accepted. Um, as was previously mentioned, there is a DBE goal of 16% on the project. If you do not meet the goal, you need to submit a good faith effort. Um, the documentation in accordance with what's stated in the contract documents. Um, we are doing an electronic bidding process, as Randy noted, and that's been done through BidExpress, and no paper bids will be accepted. Um, to be able to bid on the project, you need to register through BidExpress and create a digital ID through BidExpress to submit a bid. It can take actually up to five days to get your digital ID, so it's highly recommended that you um, get your ID now well in advance of submitting your bid. Uh, we'll get into what, a little bit what the electronic bidding is, and then if we have more questions, we can discuss it during the Q&A period. But essentially, it's just a cloud-based bid management system used to advertise and distribute documents online using a sealed secured program to accept bids on behalf of the owner. It allows the owner to receive paperless bids uh, from any computer and obtain analyzed bid results instantaneously. And everything's encrypted through BidExpress. Uh, why electronic bidding? Um, you can receive sealed, secured, electronically signed bids. You can instantly communicate with all potential bidders that are on the plan holder list. Uh, offer plan sheets and bid documents online. Uh, you can instantly analyze the bids. Uh, you minimize discarded bids with errors and omissions. Uh, you instantly summarize results, rank bidders, and distribute to the public. Eliminate paper wa waste and eliminate travel time and bid runners. And this is essentially the same system that Caltrans is using on their projects as well. 
So any bid inquiries on the project, you need to go ahead and submit them through Bid Express. Uh, the deadline for bid inquiries is 11 a.m. on Wednesday, May 5th, or excuse me, May 30th, 2018. And all the uh, bidder inquiries and responses will be issued through Bid Express. It's your responsibility as a bidder to, to check the website for those documents. Um, as we mentioned, at least one addendum will be issued, which will include meeting minutes from this pre-bid, uh, along with any changes to the contract documents. And the addenda will be sent through Bid Express, as previously mentioned. Uh, the plan holders list is also maintained on BitExpress. There's it's kind of a weird way to get to it. If you click on more, it'll say plan holders list at the bottom. You can click on there and you can get the plan holders list directly from BitExpress. Uh, just another reminder that um, this meeting and the bid opening will be broadcast live on the Authority's YouTube page. And if you need to go back and reference this meeting for any reason, you can go ahead and, and do that also. It'll be posted in its entirety after this meeting. And with that, we'll go ahead and open up to any questions and answers. If you can state your name, uh, company, and then your question, that way we can make sure we get it in the minutes. That'd be oh, great. Uh, the question is if the authority can delay the bid opening from 11 o'clock to later in the afternoon. So, Ivan? So, uh, two or three. So, three. So, uh, maybe you can be more specific about what type of paperwork you're talking about. Okay, I can. Okay. Uh, John's car, for those who don't have sons. Yeah, Forms 12B, Part 1 and 2, subs not used. Uh, it's, it's kind of forms your DB commitment forms. Most of the times when we're dealing with most agencies, those are due anywhere from three to four days after the bid opening. That allows us to get all our suppliers' information in and stuff like that. A lot of that stuff doesn't all get to us on bid day. So if an 11 o'clock bid, that, that means we're pushing our subcontractors to get us stuff the day before. I'm telling you with the size of the project that we're dealing with here, that is not gonna happen. They will just won't mess with it. They won't bid it. They get very temperamental. Okay, okay. So but you raise your hands, all the people that are here that they think that that's a big problem. All right, then we'll move it. We'll move it to 2 o'clock. That's not a problem. But the, the forms, we'd like to get 24 to 48 hours, similar to what Caltrans handles wow. these forms. So does 2 work? 2 yeah, o'clock work instead of 1 4 days. Yeah. You 4 days is better, but... Right, so that we'll, two, two, this, two. Uh, we'll commit to moving it to 2 o'clock and we'll entertain whether we need to move it even further than if you want to fucking say it's not. At least a couple of days. But it's all worked out. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, let's look, we'll look into that, okay? But at least we'll move at least into 2 o'clock. Okay, so just to confirm that we'll uh, move the bid opening to 2 p.m. and we'll also entertain looking at the deadline for submission of the forms that go uh, in relation to the bid also. And if, if there are any changes, the, everything will be addressed in addendum one. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for that question, by the way. That's, that's cool. Okay, go ahead. Uh, John Scarlett, Lucy Jones. Um, is a prime bidder only 30% requirement on this project? The question is if the prime bidder is only 30% requirement on this project, then I believe for the contract documents it is, correct. Okay. Uh, another question. Uh, reading through, is the QCQA on the contractor or is it on the agency? It seems to be vague. It's a similar, it's on the contractor. But it's not really clear. I say the contractor would have to provide the QC manager and all that. So per the con so the question is if the, the contractor has to provide a QC manager yeah. or QC plan? Well, where we're doing all the testing. You know, the QC manager normally runs the testing program. So are we doing, are we just furnishing a manager and you're doing the testing or are you expecting us to do the entire quality control program for the job? No, the, I, I, per the contract documents, the contractor does have their own QC plan that they need to submit and they are responsible for testing as well per the contract documents. Anything else? So, so if the contractor, oh sorry, Cardi Ego Sanchez Rose for a moment. Okay. So if the contractors can be responsible for all 
follows the quality control, is there a will there be a bid item added for that for that work? It's identified in the contract documents. Okay, thank you guys for your time.